Emmerdale winds up at number six for November 2021. It jumps, I believe, three spots from October in my rankings. And I was thinking, like, wow, is Emmerdale really this high? Because I don't even know how to explain why it jumped higher. That's why I was trying to decide, was Emmerdale really this much better in November? Or were there just other soap operas that were worse in November compared to the month before? And I kind of feel like it's the latter. Because Emmerdale wasn't that good in November. But there was enough going on that on a daily basis, it's it's an easy soap opera to watch, I feel. My biggest issue with the show is some of the redundancy, but we'll get to that first. I, I'm going to start with the, the, the Kim story. And them writing Kim as this person that has just kind of pushed everyone in her life away from her. We found out that her son, Jamie, was actually alive. That was a little twist. That he's alive, but he's not going to tell his own mother that he's alive. And he's the character's actually off the show. I did enjoy that twist. I just, I need to see where they keep going with the storyline for Kim. Because Kim is supposed to be this really badass character, frankly. At least that's what I get from her. And I don't quite like how this show tends to only give a fuck about the dingles and writing for the dingles. So I need them to actually continue to dive deeper into this character of Kim and let layer the story, or it's going to be a flop for me. But for now, I like it. I like that they have Kim driving everybody away. She kind of left town for now. Hopefully she'll be back soon, though, because she's kind of the most interesting part of the show for me, if I'm being honest. Now, one of the things that does get redundant for me with Emmerdale is the Dingles. I just always feel like whenever I watch the show, I always know that at some point, the Dingles are going to outsmart somebody, even though most of the family should be dumb as rocks. So... I don't really understand why the Dingles always kind of have to come out on top in the end, because it gets it gets redundant to me. And there's just so many of them at this point. They've really hurt their show by making the Dingles so prominent. And just being too many, there's too many Dingles on the show. There are. And they always end up on top somehow. Like, we have Al, who basically has been taking over the wool pack because he was able to manipulate most of the family and but in the end uh chaz ends up knowing what al's been doing and has the upper hand on al in this fucking mental manipulation game they're playing with each other and it made me roll my eyes because i need less dingle either less dingles or Less storylines that annoy me about the Dingles because they get redundant. Like Kane, the character of Kane was once a majorly intriguing character when I watched long ago. But right now, it's just so redundant. Yes, Kane's going to be mad at someone. Kane's going to manipulate someone. Kane's going to be trying to hurt someone. Redundant. It's redundant and not that interesting. And unfortunately, another thing that's getting redundant with Emmerdale is Mina being the serial killer. She ends up killing Ben. And, you know, Aaron's going to be devastated and probably be leaving town. Liv might be set up for it because Liv and Ben were arguing a lot because Liv's drinking again. It was kind of random, though, to me that Ben ends up finding evidence against Mina and then gets whacked by Mina. So, I mean, using Mina as a plot device to just kill characters that don't really matter on the show much, whatever, I guess. But it kind of could, it hurts Mina's intrigue for me. And it's getting a little redundant and the, the story needs a, a bit of a, bit of a better direction for me. I did enjoy Mina trashing Victoria's place and she was also getting close to Billy so there's still intrigue in the character for me, but her being the serial killer that's just whacking people at random. And Ben is really fucking stupid in that scene to go back and, I don't know. 
I don't know what Ben was doing. I just found the killing of Ben not that great. So see, like I'm having all these negatives with the show and I keep wondering why is it number six? But it just was better than the other soap operas below it in my rankings. It just was. GH had a lot of fucking fast forward material for me this month in November. And I already talked about how Days was just really over the top and not good. Young of the Rest is still boring. East Ender still without a real direction. So Emmerdale is better than those soap operas right now. It just is. But there's a lot of redundancy that I hope gets better. A story I did like, though, and I, I am intrigued enough by, is this Chloe character and whoever her fucking terrifying father supposedly is and how it is kind of a bit of an umbrella story because it's involving a lot of people. We have Carrie, who is like working for Chloe and whoever her father is. And we have Noah trying to hook up with Chloe. And we have Mackenzie and Charity who are like trying to be a couple, but Mackenzie ends up giving Noah condoms, which pisses up Charity because Charity doesn't want Noah and uh, Chloe together. So I just like that this story it has like connections and there's a lot of story threads within one story that makes it interesting enough for me. So yeah, Emmerdale is a mixed bag, but uh, overall, it was an easy watch for me in November. It was better than half of the other soap operas in this rankings. Do I think it's going to go up more in December? I have my doubts. I feel like it has more odds of either staying the same or dropping than going up higher than number six for me in December. But for now, Emmerdale's good enough. The top four right now are just so much better than all the other soaps in my rankings that it's hard to compare them. But Emmerdale right now, I'm just going to say it's good enough. It's good enough. 